Hey, welcome back. It's Melvin. It's day 63. I'm doing a fast recap of the aspirin watering that I started in the days prior. Crush a low dose aspirin chewable tablet with pliers. Increase the surface area for dissolving it faster. Dissolve one low dose pill and one liter of water, or you could do the traditional American dosage of a full dose, 325 milligrams in one gallon of water. So it's said to do many things, uh, boost plant health, immunity, faster germination. If you spray it on the foliage, you know, maybe 1.6% or whatever can absorb into there, depending on how concentrated you have it. And that can also supposedly prevent insect damage. So I don't know how true any of this stuff is, but I've been trying it on my plants and it's a good idea suggested to me by one of my viewers. I hope it pans out and I'm not going to immediately fertilize because I want the plants to be nursed back to health, those that were struggling, such as my Joshua tree seedling and my century plant seedling. So as you can see, the foliage is a yellow green. There's a leaf that's greener and rounder. It's, well, it's more oval. I don't know, you know, what constitutes a cotyledon. That may be the closest thing I'll ever see on this plant to one. Uh, in some plants, you don't even ever see the cotyledons. You know, so is this a monocot or what? Um, I can look that up later. So for now, I'm just doing the aspirin watering. I'm not going to get every single thing. And the leaves are waxy. So to be honest, I don't know how much aspirin will actually get on there and absorb. So that little white critter is perhaps a fungus gnat. And one that's newly molted that probably came out of the soil. I've always had some fungus gnats. And now that I've been watering more... They've been coming out more. Or it could be a white fly. You know, it does look a little different. Or maybe it's an albino fungus gnat. Who knows? So it was on there too. I think it's a fungus gnat. You know, sometimes they get in the house and they're annoying. But as long as you kind of tap the screen door when you open your sliding door, well, in my case, for the balcony, then they'll go away. And if they're not in great numbers, then they won't really be a bother. I mean, they're pretty easy to slap and kill if they get inside and buzz around the bathroom mirror at night. So the foliage looks very healthy and that's my favorite leaf although for whatever reason I don't think it's going to get much bigger than that. And it's got water on it. It's very aesthetic. The stem is you know a yellow. It has sort of a woody appearance and has a woody feel and twang to it. And you see all these red leaf primordia that are probably not going to activate unless something chews off the top leaves, which won't happen here unless I do some pruning. In most cases, I think pruning isn't necessary unless something grows very tall, thin, and spindly. You see that in some people's fruit uh, seedlings or saplings. And I think that could just be due to poor nutrition. And, you know, I have this theory that maybe just growing things indoors and supporting them with sticks. In the absence of any wind to bend the stem naturally all the time, maybe the stem just doesn't get any stronger. But I think it's mostly due to poor nutrition. So I'm getting several angles here with some great macro footage. You can see all the hairs. They're not as prominent, not as big in proportion to what they were like in the beginning when you just had this red red reddish pink tusk sticking out of the ground so i'm doing some more aspirin watering and that'll be it for this day on day 63. Uh, progress has been great so i look forward to a lot more growth and hopefully this will make this ready for more fertilization and just prevent any problems from happening i don't know if aspirin actually does anything to poison bugs or deter them from eating the foliage as advocates have suggested. So this is day 69. I thought of the concept four days ago of using multivitamins that I eat to fertilize my plants. I was browsing in a Lowe's at various potting mixes. You know, I was reading the ingredient list. You know, there are different things such as uh, potting mixes for cacti and citrus plants and things like that. I was reading through the ingredient list and realized that, you know, since animals can get pretty much everything from multivitamins 
why not plants? And granted, there are people who would say, well, there are some things that are only fat soluble vitamins in vitamin pills. But I'm not so much interested in the vitamins in these vitamin pills, but rather all those trace minerals, the metals, the compounds in usable forms that will give plants things like calcium, you know, to help build cell walls and have a very robust exterior and things like manganese sulfate and whatnot and zinc, um, magnesium oxide, whatever. You know, these are just usable compound forms for plants and animals that can be absorbed. So I don't really care about the fat soluble things because a, a plant's root system doesn't really interface with um, oil. I mean, plants don't eat oil or fats. They would get really screwed up if you apply that stuff to them, as some people find out when they, you know, put on too much neem oil or whatever. So, I'm only interested in using multivitamins for the purpose of getting the water-soluble things in there in the soil for the roots to absorb. And hopefully this will make a big difference. The concept is really solid on paper. You know, I was browsing all these different fertilizers and potting mixes, and I realized, you know, this is actually a much cheaper and probably more effective way to do it than to buy a different sort of potting mix for every single thing and yeah you could use you know like back one or whatever or all these other things uh, various forms of compost but those sometimes have pathogens in them and they stink you know like chicken scat and whatnot so I'd rather not use that stuff I just thought of this idea well, I was in a store and just wanted to try it out. So hopefully this makes a big difference. I had my first application, you know, four days ago, as I said. And this is just a live demo. And I have no idea what concentrations I should be using. So I'm going to make this one concentrated because I'm going to distribute it over all of my plants, particularly my succulents, Joshua tree seedling, and century plant seedling have really struggled so I think this might be the final key although I think the aspirin water may have helped those already I saw you know somewhat of a difference but none of this stuff is really statistically conclusive yet so I'll just have to go with a low end number with many different trials and species and you know just see from experience what works so this stuff doesn't look very appetizing you know but that's what happens in your stomach basically when you swallow one of these things and I'm watering from the top because I want the vitamins to be concentrated towards the top and not just all sink towards the bottom I haven't actually done any bottom watering for uh, any of my new plant series in 2016 and we've had a brutal heat wave lately you know it was like 109 Fahrenheit 43 Celsius almost when I went out on a hike in Julian, California recently and then two weeks later it was even hotter so I just quit that hike but um, I'm spraying some distilled water to wash off the vitamin residue now people say fertilizer and you know high concentrations stuck on the foliage can cause burns and I don't think that would happen at all with vitamin pill residue it would probably form just you know a chalky residue or appearance on the outside and that would be that and it's just calcium carbonate and some minerals nothing that I think would really hurt uh, the calcium carbonate itself is what constitutes most of the pill and you know that could make the soil a little bit more basic if you add too much of it and over mineralization of soil is also a bad thing you can have a state where you have plenty of water in sodden soil but the plant can't absorb it because the concentration of solutes is much greater in the soil than it is in the plants so you would just have death at that point so the foliage looks very you know erect and beautiful uh, there's lots of turgor pressure and the water droplets are very aesthetic up close and the color is slowly getting greener and greener so it's a pretty big transition to go from like red to yellow to green but it's slowly happening and I expect by the fourth episode maybe the one after this one that we'll have everything just be green except for the newest leaves so it's a very attractive plant it seems to be very hardy and robust which is what I predicted intuitively 
So you may find yourself asking, why am I doing all this if there are no signs of distress? Well, I just wanted to get a head start. So it's day 73. I started my bottom watering for all my plant series. And there's been a significant amount of growth. The foliage looks beautiful. It's not a lush green yet, but it's getting there. And the leaves, at least three of them, are getting quite big. As I said, a really brutal heat wave just passed. So that could contribute, uh, in addition to the hot weather on this very day of recording, to the leaf drooping. Hopefully the bottom watering will stimulate root growth, which is a practice I used a lot in my first year, 2013, of plant growing series. There's a leaf on the stem that seems to be developing there and a strand of spider silk. So there are more and more leaves. Um, they look kind of droopy. I hope that they'll become you know, more erect overnight and this won't become a regular occurrence. But I had this problem with my loquat seedlings from 2015, the previous year. So I wouldn't be too surprised if the brutal afternoon California sun was doing this on a regular basis in the summer. A transpiration pull, loss of water through the leaves is just too great during the day, in the late afternoon especially. As of this last filming, it's been only eight days since I first started applying vitamin water to my plants. It's only been two applications, so I'm really eager to see what the results will be like in, say, a period of a month or beyond. I've already seen some very promising results in some of my other plant series, although nothing's gone wrong here. I figured why not give it a great start before things stall. So stay tuned for my next episode.